Good day everyone. Today we are considering figures of speech. You may wonder, why figures of speech in English language? This topic is taken for many reasons. One, there are issues in language today. And understanding of this, we hate the grasping of what people say, what people write. Ends the topic. Apart from this topic being tested in WAEC and other, I mean, examinations, there is a need for us to understand why these words are made use of. So today we shall be considering figures of speech. To start with, this is known collectively as trope. The word or the words figures of speech are collectively known as throw. And we are considering some of the figures of speech. Time will not permit us to take care of all of them. I'm going to start with my favorite one, and that is personification. Personification. Now, before we go on to explain this, Figures of speech are also known as literary devices. Literary devices. Literary devices. They are also known as flowery expressions. Flowery expressions. And today, we are dealing first with personification. What is personification? Personification is simply about adding a human angle to something. In other words, giving the attributes of a living thing to a non-living thing. For instance, if I say time is going, time is going. Time is going, or time waits for no man. Time waits for no man, or for no one. Time waits for no man. Look at these examples. Time does not have legs. Time does not have hands. So how can it go? So we have transferred the attribute of human, of movement, to time. Time is an abstract noun. It's not even concrete, so how can it go? But we all understand that when we say time is going, time is running out. Time waits for no man. Of course, time is not human, so it cannot wait. So that is the meaning of personification. Simply transferring the attribute of man to non-human things. Now, the next one is simile. 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 What is simile? Simile is simply a comparison. Simile is simply a comparison, otherwise known as indirect comparison. I've been hearing this, that um, Comparison, you use the word comparison. It is not comparison, it is comparison. Indirect comparison of at least two things having something in common. Usually you identify simile with the use of like, that's the more popular word, and then as. Simile, indirect comparison. Let me give us some examples. You can say, as big as a bus. 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 And you can also say, 
I drive. What drives? I drive like perhaps because of the situation, like a madman. That suggests that a madman drives without senses. I drive like a madman. And so on and so forth. Now, the next one we are considering now is the figure of speech called analogy. Analogy is a figure of speech that equates two things to explain something unfamiliar. It equates two things to explain something unfamiliar by lighting their similarities. E.g., let me give us an example. Questions and answers. Questions and answers. Analogy. Questions and answers. I can say laughing and crying. Laughing and crying. Or if I say it is as simple as ABC. It is as simple as ABC. Um, analogy connotes something that gives you a mental picture. Analogy from the word analysis. Something that gives you an explanation for something that is done. Now we'll quickly move on to another figure of speech, and that will be metaphor. Metaphor. Metaphor is another popular figure of speech. In fact, I dare say that it is the most popular of all the figures of speech because we use it daily in what we write and what we say. So what is a metaphor? A metaphor simply is a direct comparison of some things having something in common. Direct comparison. And when you say direct, you make use of the word is. So by saying Nigeria has black gold, in abundance. Nigeria has black gold in abundance. When we say black gold, literally, we don't have black gold as it were, but black gold here refers to crude oil, meaning Nigeria has crude oil in abundance. Nigeria has crude oil in abundance. So we have likened crude oil to black gold. Let me give us another example for metaphor. And that will be the streets of Portacot are like a furnace. Don't be confused with simile or a furnace. Okay, let me give us a more direct one. Tunde is a lion on the field. Tunde is a lion on the field. The word lion here, comparing it with Tunde, we are talking about the agility of Tunde in running on the field. So we are not saying Tunde is actually having the characteristics of animals, especially lion. No. We are saying that Tunde has that agility, that strength to run like a lion. Now, we are considering another figure of speech. We are continuing with figures of speech and we are considering hyperbole. Oftentimes, people pronounce this as hyperbole. No, it is actually pronounced as hyperbole. When you say something is hyper, it means in excess. And hyperbole means exaggeration. 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 
Exaggeration simply means saying something beyond what is normal. Overstatement can also be seen as an overstatement. For instance, if I say the whole of Ibadan attended my birthday party, who am I? Even if I were the governor of the state, the whole of Ibadan will not come for my birthday party. That is exaggeration. Or, I could finish a bowl. I'm talking about a very big bowl of Amala. I'm not that voracious. So, hyperbole has to do with overstating things for the sake of effect. Just to have an effect. So, let me give us an example again on the board. Perhaps I can say I am the president of the Badoland. I am the president of the Badoland. Or the whole of the Badon. The whole of Ibadan land or the whole of Ibadan came for my birthday party came. so that's an exaggeration because for sure some people will not come some people will not be in attendance no matter what you do so that's an exaggeration we are considering again alliteration and this is the spelling of alliteration Alliteration. Alliteration. Alliteration simply is the duplication of a specific consonant sound. Duplication of a specific consonant sound. In other words, alliteration is repetition of some consonant sounds in a statement. So by saying Five friends fried five fishes. Obviously, I have repeated the consonant sound. I have repeated the e, uh, the, the the sound all through. So the repetition of consonant sounds anywhere will give us alliteration. Now, another figure of speech we are considering right now is assonance. Assonance. Remember, in alliteration, we defined it as a repetition of consonant sounds. Assonance is also the repetition of a vowel sound, a particular vowel sound. And surprisingly, I'm going to be using these same examples to bring out assonance usage in this same expression. Five friends. Fried five fishes five fishes obviously something has been repeated we have high hair we have high we have high sound five friends fried five fishes so the repetition of the i sound here will give us what is called assonance and um, we are considering another figure of speech now and we are going to have what is called onomatopoeia onomatopoeia and here is the spelling of onomatopoeia often this word is misspelled so we want to consider the right spelling 
of the word onomatopoeia. Simply put, onomatopoeia is representing something with the sound it makes. Representing something with the sound that something makes. For instance, when we hear booming of a gun, booming of a gun, booming of a gun, and then we also have mewing of a cat, mewing of a cat. So. Booming will represent the gun, no will represent a cat. Now we're moving on quickly to what we call pun. 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 Simply put, the word pun, simply put, the word pun is simply representing Two words that sound alike, giving two words that sound alike but having different meanings. Two words sounding alike, having different meanings, having different spellings. For instance, the word pray and pray. The word pray and pray. And I can say, the man pretended to be praying while he was actually praying on someone. The man pretended, the man pretended to be praying, the man pretended to be praying. While he was actually praying on someone, okay. So the use of the word praying, P R A Y I N G, and praying, P R. E Y I N G will give us the meaning of pun. Okay, the next figure of speech you are considering is allegri. 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 Allegri simply means a representation of something or someone with an animal that connotes more than meets the eye. If you remember this book written by George Orwell, Animal Farm, animals were used to represent human beings. In the text, animals played the roles of man. One animal oppressing some group of animals in order to show what was going on in the then political Russia. So that is allegory. So when I represent an action of someone with an animal, that is what is called allegory. So e.g. I can give you an example of the what I gave earlier on. George Orwell's Animal Farm. George Orwell's Animal Farm. Animal Farm. I can equally give us another example. The Trojan Women by Yuri Pitts. Or some people will say you repeat this. Trojan women. Trojan 
we mean. And so on. So in allegory, there are representations. That's what this word stands for. Allegory means representation of man or political issue using non-human things. Now we are considering another figure of speech quickly, and that will be tautology. Tautology. The word tautology simply means repetition. When you keep having something repeated one after the other in a work of literature or in a passage, comprehension passages, summary passages, it is referred to as tautology. So if I say again and again, don't do it. Or you keep repeating a particular word, be fast, so that the fast won't catch up with you, and so on. So you can have fast to be to beat the fast. Fast to beat the fast. You'll keep repeating a particular word fast. That is tautology. Do it again and again. Do it again and again. Do it again and again. The word again has been repeated. Now, we are moving on to another figure of speech. That will be palindrome. 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 Palindrome simply occurs when you spell a word either backward or backwardly or you spell it from the front to the back or from the back to the front, you still arrive at the same word. Let us consider the word madam. Madam. When you look at this word, madam, when you spell it from hem to the last M, or you spell it from the back to the front, you still arrive at madam. And such uh, words like that are many. If you look at the word Malayalam, Malayalam. Malayalam. Whether you spell it backward or forward, you still have the same word. It is a figure of speech. Okay, the next word we are considering is euphemism. Euphemism. It doesn't sound like um, it is spelled, but it is pronounced as euphemism. What is euphemism? It is simply saying something very harsh, very serious, very unfortunate, very unexpected, negatively, in a very mild way. Perhaps to beat down the effect or to avoid overreaction from the listener. For instance, somebody dies and you don't want to make it sound so harsh to the family. So you say, look, the man of the house has given up the ghost. Or the man of the house has kicked the bucket. You don't say, I think, medically speaking and ethically speaking, you don't break a bad news in a harsh way. So euphemism is simply playing down the expected reaction of the listener. And so, instead of saying the man has died, you simply say he has joined his ancestors 
he has given up the ghost, he has passed on. So, that is the meaning of euphemism. He has passed on. Okay, some of the examples of euphemism include he has passed on. He has passed on, which simply means to die. To die, he has died. He has left the world. That's another way of saying somebody has died. He has left the world. Or simply put, we lost him. Even though this is not a game, we lost him. So we don't just say he died. You never can tell the reaction that we ensue. So these are some examples for euphemism. All right. We just had a question from the audience. What's the purpose of euphemism? The purpose there is to play down the overreaction in a way, to play down the unforeseen expected or unexpected reaction from the person taking the news. So, if the doctor says the person or somebody or an individual has passed on and the person still does not understand, then you say he has left the world. Ah, what does it mean to leave the world? Okay, we lost him. What does it mean to lose somebody? Oh, he has died. Gradually, you are breaking the news. It's different from just saying it as it is, which can engender all sorts of reactions that may be detrimental to the listener. Right now, we are going to consider another figure of speech, and that is idiom. Many of us do not know that idiom is a figure of speech. And what is an idiom? An idiom is a metaphorical statement that goes beyond what meets the eye. That is, what can be easily understood. And so, let me give us an example here from idiom. So, if I say, as easy as spy, as easy as spy, please, do not take this for a simile or as simple as ABC. As simple as ABC. When you say as simple as ABC, it means it is very simple to handle, very easy to handle, nothing complex about it. That's an idiom. Or you describe somebody as being an Apollo. When you say somebody is an Apollo, it means a person has a perfect physique of a man. Right biceps, triceps, height, muscles, and so on. That's an Apollo. So when you come across this in any passage, a write-up or a speech, an Apollo simply means a person with the right physique as a man. We are going to be considering another one quickly. And that will be allusion. 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 Now, what is an allusion? Allusion simply means a reference. A reference. What kind of reference? Reference to holy books. Reference to holy books. Holy materials. History. Popular sayings. It 
ici, si. So, if I say, oh, the love between the two friends is like that of David and Jonathan. That's a reference to the Bible. The love between the two friends is like that of David and Jonathan. That is a reference to the Bible. The story of David and Jonathan. We are considering another figure of speech. And that is jargon. In Nigerian context, the word jargon means nonsense. But really, it is a figure of speech in which you use a particular word meant for a particular profession in a work of literature. And so jargon will mean a technical term. Technical term peculiar to a profession. Technical term peculiar to a profession. To a profession. Let us consider the word check. 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 <laughs> the word check is simply an American legal tender. Don't mind us in, in, in the British English we spell it as C H E Q U E. But in American English we have it as check, a legal tender in the bank or for business transactions. A legal tender. But in medicine, the word check will connote medical checkup meant to see the health state of someone. Medical checkup. So, jargon here, the word check is peculiar to banking and the second check is peculiar to medicine. And so, when you refer to the word check in the jargon or as a jargon, it will mean when it comes to banking, this has to do with banking. The same spelling. When it comes to health, it will have to do with medical checkup. And now we shall be considering another one, and that will be antithesis. Antithesis. Anti. Thesis. The word antithesis is simply is bringing together two opposing ideas in a work of literature. Two opposing ideas in a work of literature. So if we say man proposes, God disposes. Man proposes. And you say, God disposes. You are bringing two ideas that are contradictory. You propose, but somebody else disposes. So, you are bringing together, man proposes, God disposes. The two words, proposes and disposes, are antithetical. Or, if you say the relationship between Tunde and Joker is open and secret one. Open and secret. Open and secret. Open and secret. Looking at this, open will be a word. And its opposite will be secret. So two contradictory or contrasting ideas put together will give us antithesis. Now we are considering the word apostrophe. Apostrophe to many of us may mean 
a punctuation mark. No. It is a figure of speech. In which something or someone that is absent is addressed as if such a person were present. In other words, apostrophe addresses something or someone as if that person or something is right in front of him or her. So by saying, O oh death, where is thy sting? Or where is thy power? Death, where is your power? Death, where is your power? By God's grace, death is not here. But you are addressing it as if it were here. That is the meaning of apostrophe. And let me quickly give us another one. The popular poem, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. You can recite it in your bedroom. And there may be no star around. Yet, you address, this, you address this as if the star were present. So, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. A song for... The word star. Tinku tinku little star. So these are examples of apostrophe. And um, for the day, I'm going to be considering metonymy. 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 What is metonymy? The word metonymy as a figure of speech is used to represent a profession in a way. In other words, what is used in a particular profession is represented for that particular profession. In other words, again, the word metonymy picks a device, an instrument, a tool of a profession as a representative of that particular profession. E.g., the sword is mightier than the pen, or the pen is mightier than the sword. I prefer the pen, perhaps because I'm using one. So, the pen is mightier. The pen is mightier than the sword. Hearing the pen here is representing writing or journalism or journalist. Journalism or journalist. While the sword represents political power or politicians. Political power. In other words, writing can be very, very powerful than even the wielding of political power. If anything is written today that is very serious, it can scatter a particular community. In other words, Mere, a mere writer can scatter a whole community. And the sun, that political power, that power, may not be able to move a society as much as the pen. So, representing a profession here of journalism is pen, and representing political power is the sun. Okay, now we are considering oxymoron next. Oxymoron. If you remember very well, quite a little while ago, we treated antithesis. Oxymoron too is like antithesis with a little difference. While antithesis replace some words, Side by side, 
do not immediately with some one or two words in between like God, I mean man proposes, God disposes. But in this one, I remember the last example I gave, the relationship between two persons is open and secret. Oxymoron, we simply bring the two side by side. In fact, it is oxymoronic when you see the example, e.g., let me give us the relationship. Relationship between Tsunji and Jumoke. Tsunji and Jumoke is an open secret one. Is an open secret one. As you can see, there is no word in between. Open secret. Open secret. So, bringing these two contrasting or contradictory words together for the sake of effect is what is called oxymoron. Another example. Another example here that I can give you will be Describing a whole vehicle as wheels. Wheels. Describing a vehicle as wheels. A vehicle as wheels. We all know. That this is a little contradictory. A vehicle we have more than wheels. When we talk about wheels, we are talking about tires. Are we then saying that only tires are referred to as vehicles? No. So this is contradictory. And that is why it is oxymoron. Okay. Driving this home. Describing a vehicle as wheels, you can say... The man in the vehicle has his wheels on slow motion. We are describing vehicle, we are also describing wheels. Both of them are the same. And they connote that this same vehicle is also the wheels, but this is a part of this. And so it sounds oxy. Moronic. Another example of oxymoron is true lies. All that the man said, all that the man said, all that the man said was, or were true lies, were true lies. This actually sounds very, very contradictory and oxymoronic. You have something that is true, yet lies. So, the use of the true and the word lie will give us a perfect oxymoronic statement. Thank you.